Matt, are you ready? Yep. How do you know? How do you know when you're ready for something? How do I know when, uh, when I've had my fill of candy kiss and gourmet sweets well, made in London? <laughs> the, the funny thing about those, they're not actually made in London. They're made in Germany. Oh, well, why do you say made in London? That's misleading. No, they, they say London on there. They don't say made in London. They oh, never say made in London. That is a bit misleading, isn't it? It's not misleading. Why does it say London? Because it says London on them. <clears throat> That's why. So you're just saying London. You could say any city because... Is this an argument-based podcast? Yeah, we, that's all we, we sit... Sometimes. We, we, we sit and argue, man. That's all we do. We literally sit and argue the whole I'm way through. Already, guys. <laughs> so, hello, uh, everyone. Welcome to Private Parts Podcast. This is where we read the most intimate and sort of details of our lives. Uh, hello. You, what? Don't just go over me like you that. You guys are so slick. Yeah, that's, the that's the whole point I've of it. That's the whole point of it. I've never been anything. This is absolutely electric already. Yeah, the so whole point of it is as you have uh, now gathered with... You haven't even introduced me ...the professionals of this. We don't introduce people until the moment is right to introduce We someone. try to keep the audience guessing until the very end of the podcast. And if I was if I was listening to the podcast right now, who would I guess? Who do you think our guest is? Yeah, who do you think our guest is? If you okay, so obviously we said Matt already. We'll give, so Matt, we'll give some hints. He's a bit horny. That's the shittest thing I've ever Well, not heard. really because it's actually a giveaway. Don't give away. Okay. I am actually at the moment. Do you know yeah. why? Because I take chelated zinc. Oh yeah, well that you heard about this. Yeah, I have heard you about chelated zinc. You leapt at the zinc. microphone then when yeah. you when I said yeah, that. Yeah, I've heard it. I've heard it's good. It keeps you keeps you. Um, it's like fit, a um, kind of healthy, holistic, um, uh, testosterone. Yeah, and a, a, like coriander apparently is. That's it. Coriander is not like no, that. Co- coriander chelates uh, heavy metals from your system. Wait, hold on, hold on. Sure, you've got first, pretty highbrow. Wait, firstly, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Matthew Hall. Hey. Or, or do you prefer Matt? Matt's fine. You just do Max. Wait, hold on, mate. So you take you take zinc what? Chelated zinc. What is chelated zinc? Um, it's zinc that's been chelated. And what um, is chelating? You tell me. I think it's when uh, two molecules bond together. You say you think. I think you know. Yeah. I do know. Because God, I can already nerd. tell. I've only just met you guys, and I am struck by how incredibly posh you are, but you pretend that you're not. That has... I don't pretend anything. No, I don't, you do. I don't you pretend, pretend, pretend anything. He pretends he's, uh, he pretends a, he's a, a black rapper in the 90s. Yeah. How do I pretend I'm a black <laughs> rapper from the 90s? You do. In any way. No, I don't. Well, if I, anything, I would be... Well, the fact that you've blacked up is a bit of a good <laughs> yeah, That is true. Yeah. But, <laughs> but Francis, no, you don't hide it. No. But uh, I can tell you're very well, well, well educated, so I know that you know what chelating is, or the process of chelating. Okay, yeah. well, explain to all our audience. I'm, what, I'm, I'm leading this podcast now, I and mean, what is this, guys? No, that's the whole point, you're yeah. meant to lead it. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, so wait, what is chelating? How do you chelate something? So, um, so some heavy metals bond to... Uh, um, cells in your body, <sighs> so so things like Matt, uh, we have to listen. To this. It's really important that we mercury. Know actually, I want to know where your horniness gets from. There's chelated a, zinc. It yeah. can't be from fucking chelated it, zinc. That's not how you get. Actually, let him finish. Okay, Francis. And and what I imagine more ch- succinct. Yeah, ch- chelated zinc is is be more succinct. Is zinc <laughs> molecules b- bonded to another b- a molecule which helps it absorb into your system. And right? this makes you horny. So I right. guess it, I guess it absorbs zinc into your system much more uh, efficiently. Here's the thing. Okay. Uh, I once had to audition for a role of somebody who had a beard. And who was this somebody? Uh, Kenny Everett. Okay. To hmm. play Kenny Everett in a biopic. Um, and it was the era where he had a beard. And I had three weeks to grow a beard. So I spoke to a makeup person. Who uh, said if you take testosterone, basically. Who said if you take chelated zinc, it makes your hair grow. <laughs> oh, really? Mm. Uh, and so I, I did, and I achieved a beard... But it did mean that I needed to masturbate five times a day. Really? Wow. <laughs> Jamie, do you take this? I don't take chelated zinc. Are you sure? Zinc, no. Well, no, weirdly enough, I was saying this the other day. My, my, weirdly enough, my horniness gets more when it's summertime. It was I, actually six times a day. You were wanking six times a day? I, I, with my horniness as I get towards the summer, it starts to get up. So I get more horny as it becomes summertime. For some reason. You're not an anomaly. Yeah, that, I, everybody's like that. No, I disagree. I think people are more horny in the winter time. Really? Yeah. What? I feel like that's the case, no? Do more people get... Do you get... So, Francis, when do you get horny? You're probably horny all year round. He lives in the countryside, so you're just frolicking all day long, right? Yeah, that's why I moved to the countryside, to frolic. <laughs> <laughs> and be horny in private. 
Wait, hold on, Matt. We've got to get back to you, buddy. So uh, you're an actor, you're a writer. What other talents do you have? I, so, I, I, I do on, podcasts. I notice on your uh, Wikipedia it says that you're a narrator. Yeah. So I've done that before. Perhaps you could narrate our pr- Private Parts live tour. Oh, my God. Are you going on tour with us? Yeah, we're going on tour. <laughs> yeah. Good grief. This is what everyone says. Very, for a very specific audience. I hope they both like it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This is what everyone says. Have you, have, you have you ever done some sort of stand-up or anything like that? Mm, yeah, that's how I started. So you started doing stand-up. If you'd have read my Wikipedia, you would have known that. I, I knew Thank that Thank you, friend. Yeah. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. So, you, so wait, you started doing stand-up, and that's how you were, you were found at Edinburgh, right? Mm, yeah, pretty much, yeah. By Catherine Tate. Yeah, well done. In 2000. Look who's read it now, bitches. <laughs> year 2000, yeah, about then, yeah. So I started wh- doing stand-up in the third year of my uh, drama degree at Manchester. at Manchester University, which is in the north, guys. I yeah, know I know, I've been. Yeah, um, it's not part of a home county. Um, and uh, <laughs> so I started doing stand-up there and then did Edinburgh and then got picked up there. And, and uh, what, what was your kind of, how come you, what was your inspiration to go into stand-up? Fast like? forward... And I'm on the Private Parts podcast. Yeah. yeah, so pretty much it. You made it. You're well, damn right. You're, you've now done. How these have got a lot of sugar in, haven't they? These yeah, shit of sugar. Ooh, here we go. Sugar but, is poison. Strap mm-hmm. in, guys. But also the thing is, so when you started doing stand up, right? Yeah. Why did you? What was it about stand up that you absolutely loved? Why oh, do you like I'm doing it? Just a buzz, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was just um, the ladies. Um, I don't think. Do you get ladies doing stand up? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Do you actually? Yeah, yeah, you do. Guaranteed. So when you're doing your stand-up at the <laughs> all end... All men, if, if that's if what that you want. Takes, so they're, they're all available. So you were doing your stand-up, right? And then... Uh, but it was just men and women, because gender fluidity didn't exist in 2000. Exactly. That's a, that's, that's a now thing. Well, right? yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose maybe it was a... Uh, it was more niche back then. Much more niche. Yeah. But then, so wait, you went to the professor and then you were picked up. But I feel like your kind of career like catapulted like pretty much straight away, right? You didn't, there wasn't like any sort of like, okay, like t- sort of going through the paces. You went from being at Manchester University straight to, you know, doing shows doing and stuff. doing stuff, right? Which is really yeah. rare. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, uh, that's because I worked really hard. Although I did um, uh, have a stint at a warehouse in Acton. You did? What kind yeah. of warehouse? Um... Not warehouse, whorehouse. Oh. <laughs> no, it was a warehouse uh, for a clothing brand called Paul Frank. Oh, yeah. I you remember the one with the monkeys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't. Is that still I around? What is, what is the one with monkeys on it? You know, the, Paul it, Frank. Yeah, it had like it a monkey a, face. It was a cartoon yeah. monkey. Yeah. I used, to, um, I used to do their, pack their uh, mail order deliveries for a year. What, this oh, right. was before Manchester? This or? was while I was doing stand-up. After I'd left Manchester and moved to London. Was it um, uh, rewarding? Of course not. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this is the thing. Well, so you, financially, maybe. Well, this is the thing, so you went straight. Hardly. From, you went straight from, so you were doing that at the same time. So you were doing stand-up. But then being like a stand-up comedian, you basically went to university. So to go to university and uh, the idea is to go and get a degree and things like that. So becoming a comedian is going completely opposite against what you were doing. Well, right? no, well no, because I, I just, I always wanted to be an actor. Uh, I just went an unorthodox route. Mm. I did attempt to go a more orthodox route, which was to go to drama school after um, uh, after university. And I did get in, but I turned it down because the stand-up was going well. And I thought, I'm probably going to get to where I want to be. Um, yeah, but how do you know your stand-up? Route? How do you know your stand-up's but, going but, well? But it's interesting time? because... Because uh, the people in the room are laughing. Yeah. Yeah, for it's sure. A good test. Yeah, for sure. But I feel like when, have you, uh, whenever I've gone to stand up or watch people stand up, even if I don't know, I feel like a lot Can of. I just apologise. I've just realised that these ingrowing hairs on my in my beard are on your side. So please don't <laughs> let them put you off. Francis, you're fine. This is All my right. better side. But at the moment, I've got a couple of absolute fuckers down. What, there. like the twigs? Well, they're just ingrowing. Look. Oh yeah, yeah. Hell, they're absolute hell. I mm. get I get ingrowing hairs round my pubic area. That's because you shave your pubes. Yeah, pews. I do shave it. Me too. Yeah, exactly. Do you not get ingrowing hairs down there as well? Or no. No. So you do you ever shave no. them, Francis? No. Why don't you ever shave? No interest in shaving my anything. You have no interest in it apart from my face. So wait, so you just let it all grow out? Yeah. Why the hell do you let it all grow out? What about the What about your palms? Do you have to shave those? Uh, no, no, they're, they're... Oh, my God, what is that? <laughs> um, can I ask about these sweets? Yeah, Eating mess. Do you boys eat onions? No. No. Harrow? No. no. Oh, okay. Radley. 
Ugh, never heard of it. Carry what on. About, what about well, where were you, Bruce Francis? Where were you? The Oratory. You were the Oratory. Yeah. Wait, the sorry, so where Greek. did so were you a London? So you were a London boy. So you grew up in London. No. Where did you grow you up? You haven't read my Wikipedia at all. You, you grew not, up in Nottingham. Has your producer not even printed this off? Yeah, well, we don't. We just did the whole point of the podcast. I actually, I know all this already because I'm your you biggest are, fan. I like you. Yeah, well. <laughs> People yeah, say I'm I'm likeable. from Nottingham. Yeah. I went, I'm state educated, very working class. Mm-hmm. And so, wait, then, so you went to Manchester University, as we said, then you started doing uh, stand-up and things like that. And then, so, when was your first acting gig that you got given? Uh, a Mercedes commercial in 2003. <laughs> Shut up. What's funny about that? <laughs> you were given a Mercedes advert? How well, I auditioned for it, and I got it, yeah. And so where, a British... And it one? allowed me to stop working at my warehouse in Acton. Okay, so you did this, and then from there, where did you go? Um, then I um, auditioned, and I did a show on Channel 4 called 20 Things to Do Before You're 30, mm. which was a 13, one-hour series for Channel 4, from the producers of Teachers and This Life. This Life? This Life, Yeah. Because I feel like... That's th- life is Esther Ranson. This life. Uh, showing your age there. <laughs> Do you remember that? Do you remember it? Was it good? Was it great? So uh, this is the thing. How old are you guys? 29. Yeah, 29. 13? You 29. look about 13. People, I think I'm ageless. I think that's what happens. Both 29? 29, yeah. Both 30 in, well, November, October. Yeah, a month God, and you're just doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Christ. I mean, I feel... <laughs> I feel like I feel like your career kind of went like pretty quickly from the beginning. Yeah. And also, do, what do you think? Like you guys said at that time didn't have like social media or anything like that. Do you think that's you a, guys? No, no. Be, and it's, as in when people were hitting fame, I, millennials kill me, man. No, but they hitting, absolutely kill me. But hitting fame at your age, right? You didn't have social media. You didn't have anything like that. So you didn't know. Do you think that? Was no, I did fa- my. Di- I wrote my dissertation on a piece of slate. <laughs> Use an abacus. <laughs> No, but it's true. But the thing is, you didn't have social media and things like that. So was that like, do you prefer not having social media or do you prefer now having it? And it's it's awful. awful. Why do you think it's awful? It, it, because it's, uh, it breeds... Um, narcissism. In, narcissism and introspection. Yeah, but I feel like narcissism was always there. I don't think, I don't think it just no, but makes this, it this It facilitates it. Yeah, it absolutely. Encourages and, and, it. And I think magnifies it, really, because it's all about you. And actually, it, it provides an acceptable forum in which people can just talk about themselves and, and put their own pictures up. I, I like Twitter very much. Why um, do you like Twitter? Um, well, it, obviously, because it's self-managed, so you can choose to read whatever you want to read which mm. is generally for me news and funny people um instagram i have a big problem with uh because i think that is the kind of root of what you're talking yeah. about is that the narcissism and shallow I think it's very superficial di- it, and I, I think uh, one of my life tenets is to never compare myself to anybody else and i think <laughs> Instagram encourages that. But it also, mo- it also motivates people to want to make other people envy them. You know what I mean? It's, it's a strange... It's quite insidious yeah, in my it is. opinion. Yeah, but I, all, I, I, think, I think throughout life, people always want other people to envy them. That's, not, yeah, not, I think they do. Well, it that's, depends on your like, for sure, but that happiness depends, with yourself. But that uh, same depends on what you're posting on Instagram, right? You're not always posting things to make other people envy. A lot of envious. people do. I yeah, think, no, a lot of people do. But then in life, there's a lot of people who always want you them to be envious. I don't. Of you, why right? would you want? Why would you want people to to envy you? I don't want people to envy me. Really? I don't think people envy me at all. Well, I know. They'll envy me after my new hair. That's what they want. Oh right, yeah. Hey, yeah. so I got a I got a hair transplant. Did you? Yeah. Do you want to have a look at it? I'm. A, I'm gonna look. Is, is, is it grey with a peak? <laughs> oh no. Sorry. <laughs> This is what it looks like. Okay, it looks fantastic. Do you think it, it hasn't grown anything? Nothing's fucking happened. I don't get Okay, it. so where, where were we at pre-transplant? So pre-transplant, well, here, this is what. So basically when I turned up to the place and said I'm getting a hair transplant, they took my hat off and they were literally like, you don't need one. And I was like, They well, say that to everyone. <laughs> they don't say that to everyone. They don't say so, to everyone. So there's no, you can't hold them responsible in any way. They're they, like, you, you, we said you didn't need it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I'm sure, hang on, which bit's new? So the pink bit at the front, that's new. But, the, the but is it, is it what, so it's supposed to grow? I thought they just plugged it in. So they, what they do is they do something called uh, drilling at the back of your head. So they mm. take stuff out the back of your head mm. and they plug it into the front of your head and supposedly it grows. But however, sometimes your body doesn't take the hair so it never grows. So you pay the money and it never comes out. What's the bunce? About 4,000. Per 
No. About. About. It's about five grand. It's five grand. <laughs> I don't know why. Why I did went. you knock a grand? I don't know. Off. I thought it'd be sounding nicer. An You've even got to sell num- a lot of these sweets. <laughs> An even number. Why are you giving them away? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five thousand for a hair transplant. Five grand. Yeah. For, a full, for the full lot. For, well, then that's just but, for the front bit. But then obviously the back bit will slowly. Are you, have you got a? Have, is there a patch? No, you see, you're fine here. I'm fine here. I'm yeah. not so worried about this now. What are your, okay, fine, this is a, what are your insecurities then in life? Do you have any insecurities? Going bald. You're not going anywhere. No, I'm not. Yeah, you're not going I'm bald. not, no. You're, you're Both uh, my grandfathers died with full heads of hair. Yeah. So, so you have no worry at all? Apart from France. Did you envy me? I do kind of. See, I we've, en- got, we've, I got, envy- we've got to the root of it now. I envy no people who, um. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I do envy people who have hair, and I still don't understand why we lose hair on the top of our head. It's the stupidest way. We grow hair You don't know place. why? Well, I, I know why we do, because of our hormones, our testosterone, and things like that. Mm. But I don't understand why we do when we have hair growing out of our ears and our nose and things like that, or growing on the back of our hands. hands. And the time where you lose it is your fucking head that's meant to keep you warm. We've come full circle. Two words, chelated zinc. And yeah. could have saved yourself <laughs> £5,000. <000. laughs> You'd be constantly spunking, but you'd have a full head of hair. You know how you know how Viagra started. Do you know this? You know how Viagra started. It was a, it was a pill it was, for I think the it was heart. For heart me- yeah, it was, it was a vasodilator. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it's, people did it for heart murmurs and stuff, like that and realised that it was actually getting people not even horny, just giving them erections the entire time that they're staying for ages. Someone told me the other day you can now buy it in boots. No, I you can't. Not, I, not without a prescription. I didn't think. Oh, uh, is Viagra? Not that I've checked for it. <laughs> is Viagra? Have you ever have you ever tried Viagra? No. Shut up. Don't smile like that and pretend you haven't. Have you ever tried Viagra? No. What about you, Matt? Have you ever tried Viagra? I haven't, no. Honestly, chelated zinc is the, <laughs> is the, is the uh, resolution to all problems. I've never had any... All any, male problems. I've never had any uh, problems getting a... You haven't? Erection, no. Have you? I think I probably have. I think when I was going, I was going through a stage where every single time... It's getting older, aren't you? It's not getting old. It's not with age. It's more than neurotic. It's all about your emasculation. Yeah, I think it is. This is what it's turned into <laughs> today. I'm just being completely emasculated. Uh, no, well, you shouldn't feel like that. You, I, I think you're wonderful. I mean, the watch is quite obnoxious, but I think it's just because I'm very close to it. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, this is when I was, I was dating a girl once, and I remember that we were... What? Yeah, once I was dating a girl. Oh, that's a shocker. I know, it's a real shock. It's a shock to most people. I uh, should have checked your Wikipedia. No, it doesn't say it on there. But you have you have actually got one? I've got a girlfriend, yeah. No, a Wikipedia page. <laughs> I, th- I think I've got a Wikipedia page as well, but it's very I don't think small. you do. Actually, I w- I've, just, I've changed my mind. I want to do this on tour. Yeah? Where are we going? <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> I want to do this now. But this is the thing. Have you never had this where when I, I was, had a girlfriend once and I remember we were... Yeah, well, you say it like you're bragging. <laughs> you I wouldn't know if she went to a different school. <laughs> yeah. we, I had this girlfriend. Anyway, I was having sex and I remember this one time we were having sex and suddenly in my head I thought, I'm, just, I'm not going to get a boner. So I didn't get a boner. From then on, I just found it very hard to get So you had erection. to think about boys. I just started thinking about boys and it worked out. Yeah, that's exactly it. I've got a funny sex story. Tell us. Go. Um, so I go to sleep of an evening listening to, very quietly listening to Radio 4. Oh, yeah. In order to get me to sleep. Good I choice. like the soporific, sop, 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 sopiric acid. Sopphoric? Sop, sop, sopphoric. <laughs> What's the word? Do you mean, are you, are you thinking, you say like the... Uh, uh, sopphoric. Yeah, sopphoric. Yeah. Nature of the chat. Um, and it was, I had a girlfriend once who shall not be named, obviously. Um, what, you wouldn't know anyway if she went to a different school. <laughs> um, what should we call her then? We have to name, just name her anything. Girlfriend A. Okay, good. Right, there. First girlfriend. Mm-hmm. No, no. There have been more. Um... <laughs> And so Radio 4 was on, we were having sex. Now, I, I don't know whether, uh, you'll probably know, um, the shipping forecast. Oh, yeah, love that, it. When that, so do I. Yeah. Very soporific. It's like that... Soporific. E- SML, what's it, the MM, MRSM, you know, the thing where people like listening to people whispering into microphones. What the hell is that? Oh, yeah, have you seen that, that really that's perfect that's one on Yeah, on it's a YouTube. weird, like, it's yeah, a weird, like, subculture that. of people who, like, like, listen, it's, I don't know if that's, if, if you're <laughs> that, part of them, sorry. No, no, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a girl on YouTube and she basically, she sort of whispers. Yeah, it's, God, it's creepy. You're lying, she, there she isn't this thing. through her makeup really. Yeah, exactly. It's so weird. Then you take the eyeliner. God, you're freaking some of our listeners out now. 
Well, well, it's supposedly just a, a nice way to watch uh, a YouTube vlogger yeah. and learn her techniques, but it's definitely men just wanking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's something weird about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you put headphones on and really listen close. But yeah, the shipping... Yeah, 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 and you yeah. slowly start wanking. But the shipping people. forecast is actually quite good to go to sleep to. Or... Yeah. Wait, so Max, you put on... You put on so, so I put ready for it because the shipping forecast kicks in. Love it because it's nonsensical, it's soporific, and then it... it Fades up. But what happens at the end of the shipping forecast is that Radio 4 closes, mm -hmm. but it closes with the national anthem. Okay. And then it goes to the BBC World Service. <laughs> I was having sex. <laughs> I was having sex. Uh, and uh, the shipping forecast was on. And I shit you not, I came just as the national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> kicked in <laughs> luckily we've been going out for a while so we could both laugh about it but um how long is the shipping forecast <laughs> yeah i i didn't actually specify uh, it, it was we were it, you it just turned it on or no 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 <laughs> No, we were no, like, no. here it goes, I've got to get ready for this. <laughs> Foreplay started at Gardner's Question Time, guys. <laughs> okay. Give me a break. All right. It's the gelated zinc. Um, Wait, so, so, so were, you, were you like an early bloomer or were you a late bloomer in terms of girlfriends and things like that? Early. I you fell were, in love at 15. Um, what, is, that like, is that like young love or is that proper love? Oh, yeah, that was love. That was full like full-on obsessive toxic love okay but mm. this is the thing so but what is the difference now that is girlfriend day eh? yeah i think but everyone kind of do you not think everyone experienced that as their first love or is it different How well i guess it's because it's the novelty as well which is the added sort of it emphasizes the whole experience because it's because it's completely new but i think yeah i think you do feel those feelings but they're not not there's the novelty of them is is But why is do you think it's toxic to be so in love like no, that? No, it was it's not it's only circumstantial. We, it was a to, it became toxic because we were obsessed with each other. Mm. And so you just, have that you have us. that codependent attitude which is impossible to live without. I don't think that's specific to age. I think that's just the people. Uh, it was definitely love. It was. Yeah. And so what happened? Why do you guys break up? I had her killed. You had her killed. No, uh, <laughs> no, we broke up because it was just became too toxic. Mm. Uh, but we broke up at 18. So yeah. So wait. So, so then, that is a long time. That ago. is quite a long relationship for that age. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. But then, are you like a relationship guy or not a relationship guy? Do you like jumping into relationships or do you kind of like staying single? Um, I like um, relationships. You do. Are you in a relationship now? Not currently. No. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it, I feel like I'm the type of person who thinks I like relationships. If I was, I wouldn't be doing this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, so, on, so then you went. You were, <laughs> So then you went out with this girl, but then did you meet a girlfriend at university or no? Uh, yeah. You did. And then what? So then when you started getting a little bit of fame, did you keep the same girlfriend or what happened there? Because when you start to get a little bit of fame, right, that's when... Yeah. Um, yeah, then I... What happened? Uh, yeah, no, I was in a relationship and then when I sort of get, gained some renown, I then started having another relationship with an absolute bitch. Oh, really? um, <laughs> uh, but that was a long time ago now. <laughs> and, ever, and, and ever since my fame has waned, I've become uh, more single. Oh. Well, well I actually, think... I think this probably should help with private parts. <laughs> yeah, this is well, the one that's You've come to the it. right place if you are looking for a... Uh, I know, but this isn't a plea to your audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyone. It's not who, a plea, it, Honestly, both of you, listen. It is not a plea. <laughs> But also, okay, you also presented um, Big Brother's Little Brother Inside, didn't you? For oh, God, uh, yeah, years ago. Yeah. And what was that like? I'm going into the blue blueberry bliss. Open up. Doing maybe. Big Brother's Big Mouth. Yeah. Big fun. Totally. It was really fun. Was that one of the... I remember that, actually, Yeah, I remember yeah. it so it was. I did it with um, a, an actor and presenter called James Corden. Yeah. Do you know him? Yeah, I've heard I, of him. I've heard I, of him. I, have, I've, I haven't seen him. I'm, I'm really worried about him. Do you think he's, yeah. he's all right? I'm a bit worried about he's... Is I'm a bit worried about his, his uh, bank account. Are you guys, were you guys ever competitive? <laughs> no. No? Not really. I mean, it was so different, but so close. Mm. It was just... Um, was you were so sort of, close. You're not so close anymore. Yeah, well, we are. We're still friends. But he lives in America. He's, he's mm. doing, I think he's doing a show in America. I don't yeah. know whether you've seen it. I haven't seen the show. What the is ca it? The carpool one. Oh, the carpool thing. <laughs> I've seen that, yeah, I think. I've, seen, I've seen that one. But then you guys, because you guys... And we were, like, it was like a, a love affair. 
And and that's what the, yeah, I mean. You were like you 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 were and still are sort of Britain's sweethearts. You were this two pair coming together doing. Thank you very much. That's really but, it, but it is true. You were people. People loved you guys together, and you were doing. I remember when you were doing a Big Brother's Big Mouth, and you guys were fantastic on it. How come you stopped it? Why did you stop doing this kind of thing? So you wanted well, to. Do- I don't. What you watched it? Yeah, I watched well, you it. were like six. No, I was about what we would have been at like, thirteen. Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, I was at God, school, I remember. So like, maybe, maybe 15. I was an actual adult. <laughs> God, that's so... De- you were 13? Uh, something like that. I suppose... Well, when, when was it? 2008? No, 2006. Oh, God. Was it 2006 or 2008? When was it? I can't even remember. When were you nominated? You would... You would, you would... Oh, dear, that's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, that's really, that's really brought me down, guys. I feel, I feel really quite depressed now. I get down to Sorry, whisper. I got you were 13 <laughs> and, and you were watching me on the telly be an adult. It's <laughs> really, really quite depressing. <laughs> I feel like shit. <laughs> who, were your, who were your inspirations growing up? Like, um, I met uh, Laurel and Hardy. Uh, I grew up with Laurel and Hardy. Not mm-hmm. literally. Um, they are even older than me. And um, so I was heavily influenced by them. So no sort of great surprises that I ended up in a double act when I left university and sort of working with James so quite closely. Um, and I still continue to sort of collaborate with people now. We've Thanks got so. the question of the week now. No, no, hold on. I've got to get my phone's turning on. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you make one up? Just um, make one up. Here well, we I, I'll give you one just to warm you guys up whilst my phone turns on. Okay. Um, Ant and Deck must be fucking shitting themselves. Hey, that, that's funny. You, you say that because they, they are. <laughs> yeah, we actually think they are. What? What do you mean? Yeah, With we, you two? Yeah, yeah. We, well, have, we, I, have ITV picked you up? Who knows? We can't. We can't say anything. <laughs> we, can't. we can't say anything that's not true. So. <laughs> yeah. We're not gonna. We can't. Have lie. you have you done a have you done a tape for ITV? Have we? <laughs> Have you? I don't know. We can't say anything. Do you think we should? You would probably watch it if we did. I'm sure you would. Well, I'd hope I'd be a guest on it. <laughs> of course you'd be a guest okay. on it. Okay. How did... Tell us, Francis. How did Brazil get its name? This is, this is the question of the week. I, I, I imagine it was named because uh, it, it was where the nuts were first found. That's what I was going to say. Oh, really? Well. Yeah. I would say from the Brazilian nut. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, you think it was the Brazil named, nut. You think it was named after the Brazil nut. Is it? Is it the Brazil nut or the Brazilian nut? Brazil it, nut. It's the Brazil nut. Brazilian the public nut. school. You should know this shit. So you think that you think that it was named after the nut? Yeah, I think it's named after the nut. We both think that. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to part two of Private Parts. We're still joined with Matt Horn. Hi, Matt. We're joined by, or joined with. Well, we, are we joined? With I'm this? in between. I'm in between you. Yeah, yeah you are in between us. It's yeah. thrilling, right? How are you enjoying the Private Parts podcast? Yeah, so I'm far? actually really loving it. What is your experience despite, like so far? Despite the um, promotional material. Uh, what? What are you talking about? It, it, we this don't is, promote this it that is much. crap. This it's is not this crap. This plug is done on Microsoft Word Art in 1998. Hey, look, yeah. we're keeping it real. Yeah. Keeping we, it real. We're one of the people. We're authentic, as they. And oh, that's, actually, this is an interesting thing, Matt, what I wanted to ask you, right? And, this, yeah, and be honest here. Because, because we, you, we know how you like to lie. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. We know how dishonest you are. So this, for, the, for once, just be honest. <laughs> what you you ex, you experienced like you experienced like super fame. Well, yeah, you you did for sure. Gavin Stacey was a huge. You hit. say all the right things. I know, you. man. Just buttering him up right now. You did. You experienced super fame. What what did you hate about it, and what did you like about it? And be completely honest. Uh, what do I like about it is that people um, appreciate your work, and mm-hmm. um, uh, the best thing about it was that uh, I'd done a show as uh, that my parents were would watch if I wasn't in it and liked. Yeah. And you know, I and that I, meant a huge thing to you. Yeah, I think it means. Yeah, it means a huge lot to me to do something that my parents like you know because yeah. i think a lot of actors go through their career just doing things that their parents wouldn't watch and and that's i think that's quite hard because i think you know if you can't make your parents proud of what you do then what's the point that's, that's, a, that's a very the subjective thing. opinion that's the but, nicest things anyone's ever said on this podcast um you really are buttering me up. The worst thing about it, it is actually the, is. I'm not even. No one's been that sentimental for ages, and all sixty episodes of it. Um, but of course, it is a lie because I'm an orphan. Um, 
uh, uh, no, that is that is true. And um, and what did you? The hate worst thing, it? I suppose, is just the lack of privacy and the mm. intrusion and the uh, lack of anonymity. Did you, ever, did you ever get your phone hacked? Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, really. Yeah, really. So you were part of the whole thing. Why do you think you did? Uh, the, the, uh, because of the payout. <laughs> <laughs> the noises that you can hear. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the huge check that landed on my door. Um, so that, that allowed was, me to do podcasts. Yeah. For free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you had it where you had no privacy at all, and that was your hardest thing. Yeah, I suppose it's just it felt a bit intruded. So for about five years, I sort of retreated somewhat from talking to the press or going out very much. You became a recluse. A little bit reclusive, mm. yeah. Just sort of took a step back and tried to... Take mid- loads of zinc. T- t- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I and was just very busy. With, and sit, just listen to that right, weird YouTube where right they whisper. <laughs> <laughs> Painting your nails different colours so it looks like a different hand. I'm not no. going to go outside today. I don't want to go outside today. I just want to stay in, stay in and eat gelated zinc. <laughs> Wait, day. but, wait, but we, uh, presumably you were productive during that time, you know, of solitude. Yeah, a terrible RSI on my right yeah. hand. But, um, <laughs> yes, it, actually what it did was it made me write a lot more. Yeah. Which, um, so I now have a kind of big body of work, which is all that's scripts. Nice. And, and I suppose that's like the big question. Do you, do you prefer being a writer or do you prefer being an actor? Um, no, they're so different. I like doing both. I'm very fortunate enough. Uh, I feel very privileged. I mean, not as privileged as you guys. I mean, public school, but um, I feel very fortunate that um, I'm able to have the career that I've got. Mm. And um, but yeah, I love writing for different reasons, and I love acting for different reasons. And do you write stuff? Do you write stuff from experiences? Do you write stuff completely like? just from no experience at all just write whatever comes in your imagination because that's the hardest thing right if you're just sitting then you're writing pl- you're plucking things in the air How yeah you- well there's no point sort of sitting with your laptop open and a flashing cursor you have to be inspired there's no point forcing it mm. um, but anyway yeah so I sort of get up at four o'clock every morning and do that and then go back to bed about seven you get up at four o'clock every yeah, morning yeah right at four o'clock in the morning no you don't I do why do you write at four o'clock in the morning? Because I feel like the only person in the world is writing as you. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's no, right. No, I, I get what you mean. I f- you feel like you're the only person mm-hmm. that's actually doing anything. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's almost, it almost focuses your, yep. your, your energy. A lot of writers I know write very late at night mm. and I cannot do it. If I feel like I'm wasting the morning when I write late at night. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah. I, I can't, um, I just can't do that. But yeah. when I'm up at four... Because of the quiet, I mean, apart from, I mean, I do live near Fabric, so you do get the sort of... <laughs> you pil- get the stragglers. You get the pil- <laughs> You're up at four, so you can usher them into your house. You Come get on, the pill heads <laughs> coming out, and yeah. you can hear them a bit. Oh, actually, they're funny. Um, I actually once saw a guy at eight o'clock in the morning. He was so high, he was trying to hail a cab, but he was actually hailing a motorbike. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's that, one, that, of, one of the benefits of getting up early. That the might have been is, Jamie. I mean. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I've actually just gone a touch. I've, had, I've been to Fabric a few times. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and the one, the funniest time I've ever had was my mate Ed. We couldn't find it. It was the first time uh, he had ever taken some ecstasy. I was just a... Sorry, what's... Yeah, you probably won't know what it is. You have no idea, nor does Francis. But (laughs) it was the first time he took it. I was just an observer. You were a veteran. I was was not a veteran. I was an observer of it. A seasoned veteran. (laughs) I was was just watching. I just wanted to watch. That's all I wanted to do. Anyway, we couldn't find him anywhere. Looking around the whole whole club for him. Went into the... Toothless and pallid. (laughs) (laughs) We went into the cubicles. Went into the cubicles of fabric. A thousand yard stare. (laughs) We were in there, we were in the cubicles and we are looking for him. There's a big queue of people like standing around this cubicle laughing, like, ah, oh, pointing down. And I was like, who's in this? We opened up, it was my mate. He was naked. Was he, he shitting him? No, he just took off all his clothes because he felt too hot. <laughs> so he was too hot oh, and no, sitting in the... It hot, does... apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so hold on. So going back to that, we got a couple of questions from social that we want to ask you. Okay, Matt, from you social? Yeah, from social, man. We know you love social media. So is we got a shortening so... of social media? That's what it is. Goodness me. So with this episode 61, we've got a question uh, for Matt. Ready? You ready for this? Yeah. Theatre or TV? Both. If you have to pick. Th- theatre. I love doing theatre. What do you love more at the theatre? Uh, because it's different every night. Um, Instant feedback. 
instant feedback, different every night. Even though you're saying the same lines, the whole atmosphere is different because mm. there are different people in the room and you're, the, you don't know what's happened in the other actors' days and things like that. So the whole energy is different. So that's really exciting. Um, on and the also, telly, it's, quite a, it's, quite, it's all about doing the same thing over and over again until you've got the right. Okay, we've got another one. Um, what is your favorite and least favorite role ever played? Um, favorite role was when I played John Moss the culture club drummer in the TV film Worried About the Boy, which is a film about, a biopic about Boy George, mm -hmm. played by Douglas Booth. That mm -hmm. was my favorite role. My least favorite role was when I did an episode of um, BBC's Robin Hood series. <laughs> um, <laughs> Season two, uh, season two, episode nine. Um, <laughs> Got to start somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, well, that, this was, you know, uh, this was not, well, it was long ago. You were, I don't know, you were probably 11. <laughs> um, um, and the, the reason I didn't like that is because uh, it was in Budapest and I, I hated it. Why did you hate Budapest? First meal I had turned up with an upturned dead cockroach on the top of it but almost as if it had been put there on purpose <laughs> that does sound like it was put there on purpose yeah it does. we also got one from ben here he says hello i went to school with matt in nottingham what's his surname ben the minister school ben is ben his name is ben <laughs> benjamin ben yeah that's his name ben ben do you ben. know him uh, yeah, he goes. He goes. Hello, I went to school with Matt in Nottingham. I, I'd love to know if he played any practical jokes on teachers while he was there. What? Surely he should know that. Well, he, he went. To, I think he was obviously not at school at the same time as him. Did I play any practical jokes on teachers? Yeah. Did you do any? Were you a good student? Were you? Bad I was student? a really good student. Oh. I really listened at school. Loser. <laughs> I, I didn't play any practical jokes on the teachers, but. Um, Ben's going to be really upset. Very, well, I know Ben will be. Ben Ben will be very upset. Ben was hoping you were a total card. I mean, I got, <laughs> you not say that card. Oh, I thought he said. <laughs> yeah, well, we said yeah. it now. Um, I um, if I mean, I could t I could talk about the teachers there endlessly, but that would be uh, only fun for Ben Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to that question about theatre and yeah. Um, TV. I mean, because like you say, it is seen theatre. You're scene actually more interested in stuff I've got to say, aren't yes. you? Like, you're, you, yes. You like, you like it when I'm being erudite. Yes, I do. Whereas but you, Jeremy. <laughs> I like it when you're being you erudite. You just want me to talk about drugs. Nah, I like when you're being erudite as well. I like it. He just wants to take drugs. Yeah, yeah, I just want to just like, let's get this over with so I can take some more drugs. <laughs> no, we, we, are, we are yay far from fabric. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I get edgy when I'm near there. Um, oh, no, no, back, back to my question. Yeah. Um, which do you think d requires a high degree of skill? Because I think, I, I, I often think people with a, a camera on their face, you know, you're, you're acting in, in more than just mm -hmm. pro uh, projecting. It's like the nuances of your facial express mm. expressions. Your face is like a massive, uh, on, on, a, on a big uh, movie screen. You mm -hmm. know? I mean, w w I, I, I think that perhaps TV acting or film acting requires some high degree of, refine of refinement of... I don't know. What do you what, think? What? Because your emotions um, change. Because you're so. It's all about well, the well, because, because change you, of emotion. Because you, you can't. You can't. Uh, you can see more. Yeah, you what's can see more. In the face. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I I do agree with that to a certain extent. I wouldn't say uh, it takes a higher degree of refinement. It's just a complete, it's a different skill. Yeah. Completely different set of skills, um, which you learn or don't learn mm. depending on um, whether people think you're good or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Francis? You like to be an actor, didn't you? No, no. I mean, I, I ask my girlfriend's an actress, so, oh. so I, uh, I, we often talk about this. But I was just interested to hear what you said. Is Actually, she famous? Uh, not, not yet. I don't yeah. think so. Who is she? Katie Reese. I don't know her. I don't think. I don't think. You, what is, you know. I said that's an issue. She what? will be there. She'll, she'll but be. Is she? Is she going to be? She's going to be big. A superstar. Yeah. What is the What is the hardest thing you found about the kind of acting world? What was the thing that you found the hardest about it? In a um, sense of like. The jobs or picking and choosing what to do or or the kind of discomfort to know that when your next job is coming or things like what is the hardest thing that yeah you i mean that's hard like because you know it is it is it is a precarious business mm -hmm. and it gets even more precarious now like the industry has changed so much since i started working in what sense has it changed um there seem to be more and more shows but less and less opportunities mm. uh because people only like watching certain people 
So um, that is true. There seems to, be, especially in like big and sort of big time movies, they seem to you get put in a washing machine of people, and they seem to grab the same people out again because they know it's going to be a hit. So no one seems to take risks anymore. Yeah, I mean, I understand that. I, I understand why they do that. For sure, but that can right? be very frustrating in uh, for uh, in a city of a hundred, literally hundreds of thousands of actors. Mm. You know, um, so yeah, not knowing what your next job is is really tough i think um it's a very very manic depressive career path because <laughs> because <laughs> really it's <laughs> because you have these such dramatic ups and downs yeah. you know it's it, uh you know you really have to be quite a uh, together person and, I, and, I, and you've got to be yeah you've got to have a very very thick skin mm. because of course you what because of the critics well, or just what? constant mm, just yeah the ups and downs really and um a lot of the time you don't get feedback. You don't get feedback generally on your auditions well, if you, you don't get the the role. You oh, know, sure. So. And that's that's very difficult. Because you have no idea. You know, rejection. Yeah. Um, uh, rejection and euphoria. Yeah, exactly. A new play. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. It's that, it's, it's that bipolar attitude that you are that you are presented with. There's where, so where, many actors that are bipolar. Mm. So many. And, what? Because you know. you're given, like, like you said, that euphoric moment where you get the part, or you experience a role where they give you such good, like, congratulations, and then then the next week you're out of work for the next month or two months, and so then you, 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 you your mm. whole like self confidence like gets a lot eroded. Of, a lot right? of, if you look at if you look at the careers of uh, of a lot of actors who are even big now, if you look at the early stages of their career a lot of them only had like one role mm -hmm. per year mm -hmm. so then the rest of that year they're having to support themselves somehow right you know and, yeah, and yeah. so it's so it's 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's you know it, it is a struggle to be an actor and that actually i think it's that's why a lot of um actors these days are from quite well-off families because you know you you almost have to have someone supporting you through that but this is why to be right? able to, to be able to go to auditions that's whenever exactly you can when you, when that is exactly when that that is so true that's why all the the actors all the especially british actors all went to the harrows and things like that because like you said everyone's, everyone's being supported they can survive they can survive the 10 years it takes for exactly them to get their yeah. break is, yeah. is that's that's the reason mm. i mean and I, still you know not have to get a job exactly. and not have to get a job which would um, preclude you from doing auditions yeah. or focusing on what you, you're following your dream and blah blah. How blah, do you blah, think blah. that could be fixed, or do you think that's just something that's endemic to the actual it's, career? It's, ende it's endemic to the to career. any creative pursuit, I guess. Yeah, and you know. you know, it does it does get worse, and also you know, the the industry is in such flux at the moment in terms of broadcasters. Um, podcasts are taking over the world, and uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's, true. You know, people oh, yeah, like yeah. Netflix announce. They've got 700 new shows and $8 billion, you know. Mm. How are the Channel 4s of this world supposed to survive that? I heard the that answer is they can't. They well, also, because no one, no one wants to pay for advertising on, no. uh, on TV channels and, anymore. And also, you know, that does also have the knock-on effect that because there's so many shows, often the quality of things diminish uh, mm. a, and or... Um, Let's say you get a gig in a big uh, Netflix show. There's 699 other shows to watch, mm. so it's it's a it's a tougher market yeah. to get your thing seen. It's and so you know your product has got to be really really distinctive, and it all comes down to format, structure, and the poster. And that's mm -hmm. why I want to talk yeah. about this podcast. Because <laughs> we've nailed it. Oh, we? and on the, because we've you smashed it. absolutely nailed it. <laughs> on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have the answer to the question of the week. Well, guys, this rarely happens on... Uh, this Actually, I don't think it has happened once. We got it both right. You both got it right. I knew it. The, uh, Brazil was named after the Brazilian nut. Do you know how I knew that? How did you know that? Because uh, I did a play called Charlie's Aunt at the Chocolate Factory, ah. and um, it, uh, it gives that information. It's called Charlie's Aunt <laughs> at the Chocolate Factory, or is that the, the Chocolate you know Factory? The chocolate, is the name? You know the Menier Chocolate Factory, the Fringe Theatre. Oh, theater. the theatre, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I did a play called Charlie's Aunt there, uh. and that's... <laughs> Charlie's Aunt and the Chocolate Factory. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, buddy, listen, uh, thank you. Coming soon to Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much uh, for coming on the podcast. We really is this it? it? Yeah, dude, this is it, man. We just have a little chat. Unless he, wants, he, that, he, was, he wants some more, doesn't was he? Was that honestly it? He yeah. wants some more. That was crap. No, man, we just, we just sit and <laughs> but chat. But painless. But painless. Yeah. 
<laughs> and and pay less. You, you, no one gets paid for it, which is crap and painless. Listen to private parts. But the, well, this is what we like to do. Uh, every single time we finish the, we podcast, might make that an ad. I think. <laughs> yeah, we'll put the ad in. I did a voiceover this morning, so I'm fully in to that mode. You sound. Yeah, I mean, do it your sounds voiceover. Like you're, you're doesn't, it, doesn't it sound rich? Yeah, it does. Yeah, gravelly. Do your voiceover. Gravelly. <laughs> <laughs> is that the wrong thing to say? Gravelly. Some, somewhat it's, gravelly. It's, it's humming. It's ringing. Um, yeah, ring but a really nice quartz gravel <laughs> nice <laughs> smooth quartz gravel like a marbled gravel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a marvel white quartz gravel uh Matt, yeah dude that is it man i'm sorry that we that we we can keep going if you, you can come to. back no 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 i'll come, come back, back for another one i'll come back when you've got a higher res picture on your mugs <laughs> <laughs> but dude hey it's not over yet because what we like to do at the end of every single podcast we ask our guests to uh, say something inspirational to our audience that's a bit of the format right there if you want it and that's what you want me to do say yeah, something anything you want it doesn't it can be inspirational it can be anything it's a killer format we it's know. a killer format don't steal it because that will be annoying <laughs> we've actually we, it, it's protected there you know, so. <laughs> okay ask and it shall be given. That bottle noise ruined that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's hold it on. That's that that fucking it. profound. <laughs> he thought you were asking for the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Horn, dude, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it, buddy. Really You're appreciate You're going to cut it. that pop out of that bottle. Aren't you? <laughs> yeah, let's do it again. Ready? One more time. Let's go for it. Ask and it shall be given. I thought it was better with the bottle pop. <laughs> Francis, you nearly did a sigh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I had to hold it in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.